If you are stuck building mere reversion strategies the old way or out of ideas on how to build mere reversion strategies, then you are in luck because in this video, I will show you a step-by-step -step new method to build mere reversion strategies using a unique indicator. Most traders know that linear regression is used for trend following or at least for a trend filter because linear regression plots a line, a directional line over the past look back period. And usually the calculation shows if the line fits all the bars pointing up or pointing down or sideways. And from that line, you can define that we are in an uptrend, downtrend or sideways. So for example, here I have the S&P 500 futures and this is the mere reversion for a look back period of 100 bars. So the line in the middle is the linear regression. And then we have a two channels, which are 1.5 standard deviation from this line. So for example, if I'm looking at a 100 day linear regression, then we are in an uptrend because we see the line going up. Now we can change this and let's say if I put it at 30. So now for the past 30 bars, we are considered in a downtrend because the linear regression is pointing down. Now, instead of taking the line direction for the linear regression, we can take only one value at a time, which is the last bar, and add to it the standard deviation of the same linear regression line. So that will give us something like the Bollinger Bands, but it's not. And this is how the indicator looks like. So the blue bar in the middle, that's the linear regression value at each bar. And then the bands, the red and the green, this is the lower band, the upper band, they are one and a half standard deviation of this value. And like I mentioned, it is like a Bollinger band, but it is not. So this is how the Bollinger band looks like. So the dark colors are the Bollinger bands. And we can see they might expand and shrink at the same time, but they have totally different response because they are using a different measure for the standard deviation. Also, this is not like the Kaltner channel. So these two lines now are the Kaltner channel. And again, they look different from the Bollinger bands and they look different from the linear regression band. And we can see a big discrepancy, for example, at this part. So this is the lower channel of Bollinger bands this is the lower channel of Keltner channel, and this is the lower channel of the linear regression band. And then right on top of it, we see the Keltner channel and Bollinger bands, and then the linear regression band. So what's the point of just another indicator with bands? It is actually, you want to create a unique equity curve with mere reversions. We know that the S&P 500 works really well with mere reversion strategy. But it doesn't make sense to build the same strategy again and again uh, by producing the same equity curve. What you are looking for is a different equity curve than whatever strategy you already built. So for example, if you use the RSI oscillator or the Bollinger Bands, then you want to build something else that produce a different equity curve. So it will have a different drawdown, a different peak, during the back test. Now the same as Bollinger Bands percent B indicator, we can use that with the linear regression bands. So basically we measure where the close sits in relation to the band. And this is what I mean by the percent B in relation to the linear regression band. So the yellow line now represent the close in relation to the band. So you see here, it's below, here it's in the middle, and here it's above. The advantage when we use this as an indicator, now we can define exactly where this is sitting. Like if I click here, you can see this percent B has a value that is different than below or above. So like I mentioned, if you divide this close by the bands, you can exactly know where the close sits. So zero means it's at the lower band and one means it's at the upper band. Now the close can go below, which will be minus or above, which will be above one. So let's optimize our strategy. The length of the linear regression is 20. Now you can optimize this also. You can go to 30, 100, whatever you like. I'm going to fix it at 20. 
let's optimize the standard deviation so we will go from 0.5 to 2 instead of 0.25 and then the buy level so this is where the close sits in relation to the bands we will go from minus 1.6 that means the close happens somewhere around here all the way to 0.4 so this is like almost in the middle of the band the middle of the band is 0.5 we will do that in step of 0.2 and then the sell level once we are in a trade remember this is mirror version so we should exit when the price pull up and we will start from 0.6 so this is just above the middle of the band all the way to 1.8 so somewhere around here above the upper band again in step of 0.2 so all in all we have 539 combinations and sorting the results by return to drawdown ratio we get this table so at the top here sitting at 4.68 return to drawdown we have the standard deviation at 0.5 and then the buy level minus 1 and then the sell level 1.2 so minus 1 means we are not just below this but further away Remember, this is zero and this is one. So minus one should be uh, really far. And then we are exiting just above the channel, which is 1.2. Now this is producing 129 trades with an average trade of $820. This is really good for the S&P 500 because most mere version strategy on the S&P 500 is around $400. But remember, this is a uh, low number of trades. So if we look at this one, this is 242 and 725. So again, this is really, really good strategy. And this one is at 0.5 standard deviation again, but this time we are buying at 0.4 exiting at 1.2. That means we are entering the trade once the close just below the middle of the channel. So it's not even below the lower channel and we will exit when it is above at 1.2. Now, since this is more trades, I prefer to take this one because I can always add a filter to enhance my strategy. Now, just to uh, have a look, let's see how many trades we have in total. So this is also really good, 384, also very good average. Remember, you can always add a filter here. And if we look at net profit, we have here, this is 210 and at 80% win rate. The problem is the low number of trades, which is 49. So if we filter 100 trades minimum, and now sorting, we get the top is at 180% profitable, 81. That is amazing. 109 trades, 1600 on average. So no need to filter here. You can just use this one. And here is a 3D view of the results. So the water level here is $100,000. And here we have the buy level from minus 1.6 to 0.4. And the sell level, from 0.6 to 1.8 and we are looking at the 0.5 standard deviation so obviously we have really great stable area let's look at the other ones so 0.75 also looks good like this area is really good so definitely lower standard deviation is better so 1.75 and 0.5 they're all good so let's look at the results of the top net profit at 180 this is the top net profit of over 100 trades so we are uh, disregarding the strategies with less than 100 trades. So this is the strategy applied, which is 0.75 standard deviation and zero to get in and 1.4 to get out. So this is, so zero, basically just any close below the lower band and 1.4, it's, you can see here, we got out here where we are above the upper channel by 0.4 and same thing here. Now we notice we are a, spending a long time in this. So this will uh, face big drawdowns. So we can introduce exit after number of bars. And here are the results sorted by return to drawdown by introducing an optimization for the number of bars. So again, this is the standard deviation, the buy level, sell level. And here we can see the number of bars. So exiting like putting a limit of 25 bars enhanced the strategy a lot so this is a trade analysis 109 trades 70 percent win rate a huge uh, average trade because we have lower number of trades and you can of course pick and choose whatever 
suits your portfolio in terms of number of trades in lower average or lower trades and higher average trade. This is the equity curve. It's really good. It's going up all the time. Also still up this year. Now, the idea here is not which one is the best. Is it RSI? Is it MACD? Is it Bollinger Bands? The idea here is to pick an equity curve that is different than what you have before. So you mix many strategies in a portfolio to produce a better equity curve. If you like this video, then you will love the next one.